What's up everyone and welcome back to the comms channel. Today's video is going to be part two in the aircraft tracking and alerting series of videos. In this video we're going to cover another band with aircraft data and also set up the Raspberry Pi to receive data and display it from both bands. So hang around and we'll get into it. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. In the previous video, I covered the 1090 megahertz band of ADSB, which is called 1090 ES, which stands for Extended Squitter. There's also another ADSB band on 978 megahertz called UAT, which stands for Universal Access Transceiver. Now this band can't be used for aircraft flying above 18,000 feet, so you'll typically only see the smaller private aircraft on this band. This is also only available in the US, so if you're in another country this band isn't worth looking into. One of the beneficial things about UAT from a pilot's perspective is they can receive aeronautical data from various ground stations across the United States. Using BISB or Flight Information System Broadcast, these ground stations allow pilots to receive information such as weather and airspace restriction info and then display it on their instruments. I was curious about what I could pick up on this band, so I picked up the 978 MHz version of the Radar Box SDR and Antenna Kit I showed in my previous video. Since this is only used by general aviation aircraft at lower altitudes and not airliners, I wasn't surprised that I didn't see a ton of traffic on here. Now if we look at the chart here, we can see that the most aircraft I've picked up at one time was about 7 compared to 157 aircraft on the 1090 band. So 978 may not be worth it unless you live around mostly general aviation airports and have no major airports near you or you're really intent on picking up as much as you can. Now let's go ahead and get things set up. After the antenna is mounted and everything, we can set up the Raspberry Pi. So let's start by downloading the image that will flash to the SD card by going to adsbexchange.com. Then from there, click on the Share Your Data tab, then Custom Image. If you get an ad pop-up, just close it out like this. Then towards the bottom of this page, there's a download links section where you'll see a link to the latest download. Once that's downloaded, we will next need a way to flash the image to the SD card. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and insert the micro SD card into your computer. And to do the flashing, we'll use a tool called Etcher that can be downloaded from etcher.belina.io. And I'll include links to all of these in the video description. But from this page, just click on the green download button and then select the download for your operating system. In my case, I'm downloading the Windows installer version. And after that download is complete, go ahead and go through the installation process and then we can go ahead and start Etcher. Then with the Etcher program started, go ahead and click on the flash from file button. Then you want to find the ADSBX zip file that we downloaded earlier from the ADSB Exchange website. Then click on the Select Target button. If you have your SD card inserted and you see more than one device available as a target, make sure you're selecting the SD card and not some other drive on your computer. In my case here I have this one terabyte Samsung drive that I have a lot of my videos for video editing and that would suck big time if I accidentally selected this because I would lose everything on this drive. So be sure to select the correct drive here. Once you've selected the correct one, go ahead and click on the select button. Then click on the flash button to begin the flashing process. If you get any messages popping up like this asking to format, those can be ignored and closed out. Then if all goes well, you should eventually see a flashing completed message and you can now remove the card from your computer. Now we can go ahead and insert the card into our Raspberry Pi. Also go ahead and connect the antenna to the SDR and connect the SDR to the Raspberry Pi. If you're using both the green 1090 and red 978 SDRs, just connect the green one for now and leave the red one disconnected. Now we can go ahead and power on the Raspberry Pi and after it's powered on, 
we should be able to open up a web browser and go to adsbexchange.local when everything is booted up. This will bring us to the main page and we should actually be able to receive aircraft now without setting anything else up. And as we can see, when we go to the 1090 map here, we can see aircraft flying around. However, I do recommend taking some configuration steps. So first we, we should change the password of the device to something other than the default. So if we click on the change password, update and reboot button here on this page, click on the old password box and enter in the default password, which is ADSB123. Then enter in whatever password you want to use in the two remaining password boxes below. Then go ahead and click on the change PW button. After that, your password has been changed. Be sure to remember your password as there is no easy way to recover it and you'll have to reflash the image to your SD card and start over from scratch. Next, let's go ahead and configure the location. Now, this isn't required, but it is needed if you want to provide MLAT info to ADSB Exchange. And MLAT is where multiple receivers at different locations use TDOA or time difference of arrival to triangulate where a signal is coming from. This is needed to track aircraft using the older mode S transponders that don't automatically transmit their positions. So let's configure the location by clicking the button for it here. Then click on the link that says this site to get the lat and long info. So on this page, just zoom in to where the receiver is going to be located. Uh, I'm obviously not at the Knoxville Convention Center, but I'll use this as an example for the video. Uh, copy this first number here, which is the latitude, and then paste that into the latitude box. Then go ahead and copy the second number and paste that into the longitude box. You also need to enter in the altitude of the location as well. If you have an estimate on how high up the antenna is above the ground, just add that to the height shown on the map. For example, if the map says you're at 950 feet and your antenna is 50 feet above the ground, you'll want to put 1,000 feet. Next, there's the feeder name for the MLAT map. This is only required if you want to show up on ADSB Exchange's MLAT map. And your exact location won't be shown on the map, and it'll just be a random location five miles away from your actual location for, for privacy reasons. Here's the map that this would show up on, and here we can see all of the approximate locations of other receivers. Now, if you don't want to be shown on the map, you can actually select No here and you can still provide the data, but you just won't show up on the map. A lot of the rest of the stuff on this page we can leave as default. Now there's this enable 978 UAT option. Uh, leave this as no for now. Even if you're planning on adding the second UAT SDR, leave this as no. Then the rest of this stuff we can leave as default and click on the save and restart services button. Then click on OK and you'll eventually be taken back to the main page. So if you're just planning on using a single SDR for 1090 and not both the 1090 and 978 SDRs, you can skip this last part. Uh, if you are, you'll want to change the serial number of each device. To do this, we'll log on to the Raspberry Pi's command line interface. And to do this from Windows, just click on the start button and then type in terminal and then select that to open it up. Then we'll log into the device by typing in SSH and then space PI or PI and then at ADSB exchange dot local. Then go and hit enter and then here we will type in this password and it'll be the password that we changed earlier. Once we're logged in we'll need to enter in some commands. Uh, to make this convenient, I added a page with instructions with easy to copy commands while following along. And I'll include a link in the video description to this page as well. So the first thing we need to do is stop services. And if you look to the right of each command box, you'll see a button to copy the command. Go ahead and click that to copy. 
and then we can paste it into the terminal by right clicking on the terminal window. Then go ahead and just hit enter to send the command. So that command should stop the services on the Raspberry Pi. With those stopped, we are now ready to change the serial number on the 1090 SDR, which, which is the green SDR if using the radar box SDRs. Now make sure that that is the only SDR plugged in at the moment to ensure we don't make changes to the wrong one. Now go ahead and copy the command here and paste it into the terminal window by right clicking on it. Then go ahead and hit enter. And it will ask if you want to write the new configuration all you have to do is just type Y and then hit enter. Once that's done, you'll now need to unplug the SDR and plug it back in for the change to take effect. Now if we, after we do that and if we run the RTL test command, then give it a second and push and hold control and then hit C to stop the command. If we look to the top there, we'll see the device has the changes made to it. Now we're ready to move on to the 978 SDR. Go ahead and unplug the 1090 SDR we just did and plug in the 978 SDR, which is the red one if using the radar box SDRs. And we'll now go through the same process we did with the 1090 SDR. The command for this one will change the name to 978 UAT and the serial number to 2 in this case. And once you've gone through that, go and unplug the SDR and plug it back in, and then run that RTL test command again to verify the change. Then we can also go ahead and plug the 1090 SDR back in, so we have both of them plugged in now. And then with both of the SDRs successfully changed, we can go ahead and start the services back up by running this final command here. Now we can head back to the main page here and click on the Configure Receiver and Location button. Scroll down to the Enable 978 UAT section. You'll likely have a No here. Go ahead and change that to Yes. Once you've changed that, then go to the bottom and click on that Save and Restart Services button. Now we can click on the Assign SDRs to Services button on the main page. Here's where we set the SDR to a service by its serial number. So earlier we set the 1090 SDR to have a serial number of 1, so we'll select that here for this one. And then we, earlier we set the 978 SDR to have a serial number of 2, so we'll select that here. Now we can go ahead and hit the Save and Restart Services button. After that restarts and brings you back to the main screen, we can go to the 978 map here and see if we're picking anything up. We're of course not going to see as much as we do on the 1090 map, but we now have confirmed that things are working. So if you're going through this process late at night and don't see anything, it may be working and there's just no general aviation aircraft flying at the moment. Try again during the day and you should see some stuff flying. If we go to the Graphs 1090 page, we should now see a UAT 978 section here as well. So with that, we're good to go. Everything is set up properly and we're receiving aircraft on both bands. That'll do it for this video discussing UAT and setting up the Raspberry Pi with SDRs for both bands. In the next video, we'll be going through the alerting script I made called Skywatch and we'll configure it to send alerts via Telegram. Hopefully you found this video informative and useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you all and have a good one.